Well, either neither is true, or this power supply is broken. No, that's possible. Is the uh, power strip on? <laughs> All right, now we are live. <laughs> Trained professionals. Hey everyone out there in YouTube land, I am Perry Love Whistle. And I'm Titan Reaver. And tonight we're going to be making some power supplies for a Toolkit M6. For anyone out there who wants to get into hobby, specifically quadcopters, uh, freestyle, racing, whatever, and all this cool new stuff going on, you, gotta, you wanna get a Toolkit M6, but you don't know how to power it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a power supply out of an old laptop power supply, right? Uh, one out of a car jack, and we're going to have a, an old computer jack, computer, an old computer power supply. Yeah, this is really oddly important part of all of these tools is how to turn them on. Uh, <laughs> so we're, we're going to help go through that uh, just with some stuff we have available to show you a few different options for yeah. what you're trying to do. All right, so this has an output uh, up to 6.32 amps, which is enough to kill you if yeah. you handle it incorrectly. So, which um, we would never do. Which we would never do. You, uh, because when I cut this open, I'm not gonna know which end is positive, which end is negative, which is very important to know before soldering anything into an XT60 plug. Um, I'm gonna have to use my multimeter, uh, which means I'm gonna have to actually expose myself to that voltage and that current, um, which is dangerous. Don't try this at home. I am a more or less trained, more or less professional. Yeah, basically qualified. Yeah. <laughs> basically qualified. <laughs> All right. Uh, do not plug that back in. I'm not plugging it. I'm just putting it okay. near the place. Okay. Don't. Trained <laughs> professionals. Boom. All right. The, the <laughs> outer conductor is negative. The inner conductor is positive. Got him. All right. Good to know. All right. Well, the connector wires are much more flexible along their length. We need to sort of mitigate that on the end and give us a better surface for soldering. And that's what the point of tinning is. So when tinning wires, uh, you do need to be careful, or you're trying to get a, a pretty healthy amount of solder on the wire, especially because we're going into solder pots, which is basically just a pool of solder that you stick a wire in. Um, but not so much as to cause too much wicking upstream of the solder connection. That causes brittleness, and brittleness causes fractures, and we don't need that. You know, I never thought to have another person available when I was soldering. Well, that's why that's why those helping hands exist, because most people who uh, who are soldering detailed things like this don't have friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that checks with charter, yeah. You know what? All this dialogue's getting ah, <laughs> mother. <laughs> All this dialogue's getting cut out, by the way. Because uh, at least I burned myself. You shouldn't do. And then, in lieu of the correct method, you can instead do the jam the soldering iron in there, jam the soldering it, solder in there. Yeah, we're getting heat up the up the cable pretty good now. So I think our yeah, heat shrink is shrunk. It's an indication we're probably done with that connection. Yeah, I mean it's solid to the back. It appears that there's solder in the bottom on the wire so aside from our heat shrink which problem has to be cut off just like the previous one and maybe if we thought about this we could have mitigated this problem and i'm thinking nah 
she over here. People said nothing good would ever come from smoking. Well, you showed them. <laughs> I showed you, Paul. <laughs> All right, so uh, generally you can expect when it comes to wire colors, there's a couple of pretty common uh, standards in the industry. Red is usually positive. Black is usually negative. What we have here is a brown and a blue. Well, you know, I mean, nothing says we have to stick to the standards. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks, Energizer. <laughs> we appreciate your innovation in uh, wire color technology. Uh, <laughs> it's a pilot program. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next level. Uh, well, unfortunately, uh, I don't have a 12 volt power jack inside of my house, so I guess we're gonna have to go on a little adventure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So I was right. Brown is ground. Remember yeah. that, everybody. Brown is ground. Brown ground. There we go. Take a look at that guy. Oh, let's make sure it's focused. Yeah, look at that guy right there. That's some solder action that you can write home about. It's true. Shaboom. Shaboom, he says. That's a good, that's a good pot. Yeah, that's yeah, a that's, a, that's a good pot. I mean, it's as good as solder pots can be. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's that good. Good. Now, I can recheck, verify that our connection is still good. 12.4. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. I'm going to edit that out because it's my YouTube channel. <laughs> First try, everybody. <laughs> First try every time. All right. So this is designed to go into a computer, which means if I plug it in, plug it in, flip this switch, and nothing should happen. Uh, and the reason why is because it knows it's not plugged into a computer. Um, and ultimately, that comes down to this green wire right here, that's the power wire. That is an active low signal, which means I need to short it to ground in order to get this to turn on. So I've got uh, a high tech piece of test equipment here. Only the professional grade. Oh, also this is a great time to run the disclaimer one more time. Uh, do not do anything that you see on this channel or you will die. <laughs> and as you can see, I plug that into a ground pin. The fan starts running. Can you give it another pass? No, mm -hmm. one more pass. Do one more pass. Hey, just one more. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, now see that. Yeah, that's good. To the direction this this fan is doing work, you know. I all right, so we've connected one of the uh, two plugs. We're getting nice 12 volts out of the power supply. Good. All right. Clean. Good to go.
here. Straight, straight. and why. It's good, yeah. I can still see all of the different conductors. It's got a nice uh, shiny fillet. I know you like to hear the word shiny fillet. It's basically my favorite thing. Just gets me going. Now let's All right, the video cut out, but uh, you should all know that my last one was way better than this. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> First, we've got the uh, the plug coming off of the laptop power supply. It was not uh, not too pretty. Not what I would call our best job. No. <laughs> right, we learned a little bit. Got uh, got our plug for the car power supply, which a little, little <laughs> bit better. A little better. We learned a few things. Uh, right. Yep. And then our last two off of the desktop PC power supply, looking good, you know. And we all know everything under there is pretty solid, so yeah, it's good. 